We're talking running back previews. Why is Braylon Allen getting disrespected nationally? Let's chop it up on Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? I am Ryan Herrings, your host of Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this one of your first listens every single day. We are here for your team every day. Uh, today's show is also brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And let's get into it. I, I again always want to thank everybody for tuning in. However, you found us on, on podcast apps, YouTube. If you're listening, watching, both are welcome, both are awesome, both are, are I'm very grateful for. And we're continuing our, our football positional previews. Let's get into it. Let's do running backs. And same segment, same type of layout we did with quarterbacks. We're going to start with the depth chart. Who's here? How do we see the depth chart shaking out? Any newcomers that we're really interested in seeing? So let's start there. Obviously, the, the big kahuna here, Braylon Allen, coming back off that incredible, incredible freshman season. A 17-year-old behemoth tore through the Big Ten. Um, incredible 6.8 yards per carry. And, and a, a player who, quite frankly, didn't even really play in the first month of the season. You know, his numbers could have been, I mean, 15, 16, 17, 100 yards as a freshman is averaging 6.8 per carry. I will say this. I teased it in the opening. He's a little disrespected nationally. You know, ESPN today or the other day came out with their top 100 college football players. Braylon Allen is 34th, which seems really high until you dig into the running. He's like seventh for running backs, right? And some of the players ahead of him, this is, let me just go off on this tangent here. People, people talk about it, but they don't realize the dude was 17 on a broken offense, having never played full-time running back in high school, right? Like what he did was ridiculous. And they have running backs ahead of him who don't have better stats. ESPN has, they have running backs ahead of him who, who frankly have lesser stats and have been in college several years and were in better offensive ecosystems. I, I don't know what they're missing, right? Braylon Allen is generational. You know, he may not quite be Derrick Henry because he doesn't quite have that that super high gear, but he's a generational running back. So they have uh Travion Henderson ranked ahead of him, uh, who is a true freshman ran for 1200 yards, very similar to Braylon Allen. They have um, Robinson, the Texas running back ranked ahead of him. And they mentioned with Robinson, you know, Heisman potential missed two games. He ran for 5.8 per carry. Braylon Allen was 6.8 per carry. And he also missed games. They have Jamar Gibbs ahead of him. The Alabama running back who used to be um, on Georgia tech. Jamar Gibbs ran for 750 yards last year. Like, I get it. He's really talented. And I'm not trying to knock any of these players. Jamar Gibbs has been, has been in the you know Division I football for a couple of years. He ran for 750 yards last year. Braylon Allen ran for 1,200. Like, what are we doing, ESPN? Like, watch more football, please. Uh, they have Mo Ibrahim ahead of him. You know, who, you know the, obviously the really good Minnesota running back. And I'm not crushing Mo. I think he I, he's a really good running back, super physical, tough, durable, knows for the end zone. Like we've seen Ibrahim, he's really good. He's never had a year in his three years of college football as good as what Braylon Allen did as a 17-year-old last season. Stop with the disrespect. This is nonsense. Mo Ibrahim, there's not a college coach in the country that would take maybe P.J. Fleck. No, not even P.J. Fleck. P.J. Fleck would drop a dude in a minute. What am I talking about? In a minute. If he could upgrade a spot, that's the the least loyal coach, right? If we're being real. So no, stop with the disrespect ESPN. Braylon Allen is not behind Jamar Gibbs, uh, Beyond Robinson, Mo Ibrahim. No, 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 no. Disrespected. Um, tangent, tangent over. So Braylon Allen at the top of the food chain, top of the depth chart. You have Chesmo Lucy as the number two guy in this room. And Malusi's a really good player. We've talked about him a ton. He looks back. He looks healthy. He looks explosive. Former four-star guy. He was on pace, if he didn't get hurt last year, to probably go for 1,100-ish yards and eight, nine touchdowns, 1,200 yards, eight, nine touchdowns. I think he's probably the third down back this year. I, I really hope he is. That's going to give him the opportunity to get more, more touches, right? Because Braylon's going to eat up a bunch of those first and second down reps. If, if um, Chez can be that third down back, it gives Braylon a bit of a break. And it gives us, again, an ability to get another dangerous pass catcher. You know, Malusi can catch the ball out of the backfield really well. He's good in the open field. He's tough. Really, really good uh, number two running back. Coming up at three is Isaac Grendo. Uh, Grendo, I've talked about him a ton, right? He's my X factor this year. 
just explosive. Like there's very few dudes on this roster with that size speed combo and practice reports have been good on them. You know, Evan flooded two, four, seven said something along the lines of, you know, uh, I saw this tweeted out uh, that he looks better. He's running a little more North South. He's healthy, right? So um, just an explosive track guy that we've never really been able to keep healthy enough to unleash, but he's a different element. And he's the type of player that Braylon's going to do a lot of punching. Chaz is going to do a lot of punching. And then you're going to be able to bring this, this fresh, fast, big back into, into the game in the third quarter, run a jet sweep with them, run a, you know, a, get him up isolated on a linebacker in a, in a passing route. And I think you're going to be able to break some really big gains against a tired defense with Garendo. So I really, really hope he stays healthy. That four spot is probably going to be kind of a Julius Davis, Bradley Shipper type of a, a timeshare. And I'm not really sure last year Shipper was kind of that third down guy. And he had a pretty good year, you know, in that role. He's, he's a solid player, you know, shades of um, maybe a little Dario Guboale, uh, Garrett Groshek type, not, not as good as either, but a, I, I would call Shipper kind of a reliable, steady player. You know, he'll do, he'll get what's there. He'll, you he know, the assignments. He's a senior, former walk on. And then you have Julius Davis, who is another player like Isaac Grendo that hasn't been able to stay healthy, has had issues being healthy, you know, but a player that was very highly touted coming out of high school at an LSU offer, had, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember, a USC offer, right? So, highly recruited player coming out of Wisconsin high school. And just hasn't really been able to stay healthy, but he's stuck with it. He's been in the program for a long time. So I'm very excited to see kind of how he progresses. And that's really the top four or five. A few more names here. You have uh, Grover Bordelotti, who is a, a freshman, a uh, redshirt freshman, sorry. Uh, walk on, did get a few carries last year. Um, you know, he's kind of buried, but he's he's on the depth chart. And then you switch over to fullback. You have Jackson Aker, who is kind of a running back last year. They transitioned him to fullback. He's added some weight. He's up to 240 pounds. Another, you know, you talk about Garendo being really athletic. Acker is another dude who, as a fullback, is really athletic. You know, he's a track guy in high school, and he potentially gives Wisconsin a little bit of a uniqueness at that position where it's not just a plugger. If you remember the ways Wisconsin used guys like Derek Watt, uh, Brady Ewing, you know, it, it, those type of players, this is something that Jackson Aker, we don't know. We have to see it on the field, but they could potentially use him in that role. So I'm very intrigued. You know, it's going to be his first year on the spot. So we also don't know if he's going to hold up to the physicality of that position. He, he needs to prove it on the field. That's a that's a tough spot, obviously. So uh, he's a starting fullback. And behind him, you have Riley Nowakowski and a couple other walk-ons are on the roster. So that's kind of the depth chart. That's how I see it breaking out. I don't think there's any big surprises here. I think the top three is very set with Braylon Chez. And then Isaac Rendo, I think after that, you have a bit of a battle between Julius Davis, Brady Shipper, and then the fullback spot is Jackson Akers. Now, if Je if Aker gets hurt, you know, it's it. there's not a lot behind him proven right now. I don't know if they would swing a tight end over to that spot, if they would go to more two tight end sets and not use a fullback as much. You know, maybe Riley Nowakowski does fill into that role. You know, so that's an interesting spot if he gets hurt. But, you know, no newcomers to this spot. Uh, they didn't bring in a recruit last year cycle or a transfer. So, you know, that's, that's the depth chart coming up. We're going to talk best case, worst case scenario, including a potential nightmare scenario that could happen this year on lockdown badgers. But first today's show is brought to you by bet online. Bet online remains your source and the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. And it's also a sports mecca. Find reviews and news of every league, baseball, basketball, esports, golf, combat sports, NHL. It's all there. Sports information and sports betting. Also online Vegas casino games, roulette, blackjack. Tons of stuff to do there is my point. Podcasts, newsletters, learn how to do it. Or if you're an expert at it, get more guidance on how to do it better. Right? It's, it's Locked On's number one choice for any type of sports betting. Um, the top online resource for all your live embedding and futures as well. You know, we've talked about that a lot. If you have a little sports knowledge, it's a great way to leverage that. Uh, if you feel have a good feel for who might be the early front runner to win the Western Conference in the, in the NBA, right? If you have a front runner for where Kevin Durant's going to start, for who's going to win the AFC East, et cetera, et cetera, you can get that on Bet Online. A ton of fun. Do it responsibly. Head to Bet Online today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet Online, where the game starts. I want to thank everyone again for making Lockdown Badgers your first choice. It's where we cover your team every single day. And I also want to tell you there's something really exciting coming up. Ultimate College Football Preview is here. 
seven episode preview with college football experts, local team experts, Odyssey College Football Insiders. Everything you need to be ready for the college football season in one spot. You're going to love this. Search for Ultimate College Football Preview on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. All right, let's get into it. Let's keep going. Running back preview show. Uh, we're talking best and worst case realistic scenarios here. So, again, trying to keep it within the prism of possibilities. Let's start Let's start worst case with this one, and we'll end on positive. For the quarterback preview, we started positive and ended negative. Let's start, let's start negative and go to positive. So, the worst case, and... I try to keep injuries for the most part out of the, the realistic worst case, right? Because realistically injuries can devastate any position. I think I right, like, and it's hard to prevent them. A lot of injuries just happen, but I think at the running back spot, you know, it really has to be a focal point of what we talk about here, because this is a, a really injury plagued position for Wisconsin with the players on the roster. So, you know, I don't think it's a stretch to say worst case, all these dudes get hurt again because there's a track record there for all of these dudes. Right. And that's a problem. Like that is a real potential problem. We saw last year, Braylon Allen got nicked up a lot down the stretch. And quite frankly, in that Minnesota game, he was a shell of himself. Like he, I don't even know if we'll ever fully know everything he was dealing with. I think he had like seven nagging injuries. Now I'm making that number up, but he was, a, he looked like a 50 year old version of Braylon Allen. He was just a total shell of himself. And I think that's the only concern I have with Braylon Allen is He's a big dude that doesn't miss a lot of contact, you know, and there's, there's players who really have been able to miss the big hits. I think Braylon Allen takes more punishment just because, you know, his body type, his physicality, um, his lack of experience as a running back. So he got nicked up last year and he's already missed a, a fall practice this year with a, a very minor thing, but listen, it it's worth keeping an eye on. Then you have Ches Malusi, who even before his Achilles injury last year was battling a hamstring, right? So you have, uh, Braylon Allen, who got nicked up last year, Ches Malusi coming off a big time Achilles injury. Now he looks good, but still, it it makes you it makes you cringe a little on the inside when you need those two dudes to be durable. And then your third back, Isaac Rendo. I mean, he's been the ultimate case of of you know just injury after injury after injury. You know, a handmade bone, a hamstring. I mean, he's had he hasn't been on play much at all in his career because he's continually been hurt. He's done it in camp. You know, they've had him warming up in games and he's pulled something like uh, uh, really rooting for him, right? Everything he's gone through, he stayed in the program. He's done the rehab. He's done the work. He looks great. But if you had to make a bet, like, I don't know if you could bet on him staying healthy. And then Julius Davis, you keep going down the line. Julius Davis, is another player, had a sports hernia injury, has hurt himself several times. He missed time in practice. Uh, so really those top four backs, there's not one dude you can point to and say this, this player has been able to stay healthy, really stay healthy over the course of his time at Wisconsin. And a lot of these players have had injuries going back to their high school time. So I, yeah, that's the worst case scenario, right? Like that Braylon Allen gets nicked up again. Malusi has some issues with the Achilles recovery. Isaac Rendo has another problem somewhere in the lower body. You know, Julius Davis has another issue because it's happened. So that's the worst case. And then that goes into my one of my bigger frustrations with last year's offseason. Not landing a running back in the recruiting cycle and not bringing a transfer in, I thought was a mistake. Straight up. Because you had a backfield full of players that were dinged up or had a history of being injured. Don't be stunned if those players get hurt again. Now, a lot of injuries in football are, you know, they are what they are. You can't predict them. It doesn't mean more are coming. But sometimes... You know, like leg injuries, Achilles, hamstrings, those things are also prone to get re-hurt, right? And that's what some of what Malusi and Garendo were dealing with. That's some of what those internal injuries, what uh, Julius Davis was dealing with. So, yeah, I, I think they should have brought in another body, another healthy body, because, you know, running back is obviously such a big position for Wisconsin, but all these players, again, just have that injury history. All right, let's shift over to best case. That's the worst case. We got that out of the way. Best case is you now have, um, and I smile thinking about this, people, you have Braylon Allen coming back with actually a full year of strength and conditioning in a college program and a full year of running back reps. I don't, I'm not really sure if people realize what he did last year was incredible. He's got more in the tank, right? He's, he's reported to camp a little trimmer with that same power. I think he's a superstar. I think Braylon Allen is a superstar and we're about to see it unleashed. So that's, listen, we're talking best case. I, 
that's the realistic case to me if he stays healthy. Like he's going to have like a 17, 1800 yard season. Now, the reason I, I say not 2000 is I don't think they're going to push him. I think with Malusi and Garendo, if those dudes stay healthy, I don't think they want Braylon Allen getting that Jonathan Taylor, Melvin Gordon workload. And I would agree with that. He's still a young kid and you have quality depth behind him. So I think even if he has a great year, he's not going to get to that crazy yardage total because there's depth, right? If there's healthy players here, there's depth. Ches Malusi is a great two. And I want to talk about best case, throwing it back to Isaac Rendo. I think there's a player that's going to have multiple, again, if he stays healthy, is going to have multiple 40, 50 yard gashers this year where he just catches a defense off pace. He hits a defense that's a little tired and gives them, gives them those wheels, man, he gets to the outside. So that's my best case. You're going to have one of the best running backs in college football, one of the best backup running backs in college football, and one of the best X factors in college football all in one backfield. And I don't think that's super unrealistic. I don't think I'm being crazy there. Let me know if you think I am, but I think there's three weapons in that backfield that are waiting to be unleashed. So that's my best case, my worst case. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if I had to lean one way or the other, I, I don't know. I just Injuries are so weird. I have a hard time saying the injuries won't happen or will happen. And I certainly don't want them to happen. So I think the upside here is to, to be a very special group, though. And I don't even think we've seen the best of Chez, right? Chez had an injury in fall camp last year that said limited him. He said it limited him to about 80%. So I think there's more in the tank for Chez. I know there's more in the tank for Braylon. And we just haven't even seen the tank for Isaac Rendo. So that's that's where I'm at with that. I think there's a lot of fun to be had there. And by the way, Jackson Aker is another weapon. So I think this backfield could just be absolutely loaded. Coming up on Lockdown Badgers, we're going to grade the position, right? Give it a present grade and a future grade. And you might be a little surprised where I'm at on the difference between those two. So all of that and more coming up on Lockdown Badgers. Thank you again for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every single day. Uh, really do appreciate it. We're here for your team every day. And let's get into it. Continuing the running back preview I want to do a little bit of grades, right? So just like we did quarterbacks, just like we're going to do for every position, we're going to do a present grade and a future grade. The present grade is literally just what do we think coming into this season? The future grade is looking out two or three years at the depth chart, how recruiting's going, you know, where are we at at the position from a holistic, healthy, strategic standpoint. So uh, let's get into it. A, a, straight A. If we're talking 2023 present grade A, like you can't, you can't give it less than an A. Now, I don't think you can go A plus because you do have that nagging injury question, but you have one of the best running backs in college football who I think is going to be better. You have a great elite backup running back who I think is going to excel as a third down guy. You have a track star, 220 pound third string running back who is really just itching at the opportunity. You have a fullback that I think could be a, a weapon in an offense that utilizes fullbacks. And you have Julius Davis, a former high, high three-star running back as a fourth stringer who, you know, now might fully be healthy and ready to, to take a few reps as well. And on top of you have Brady Shipper, who at least in a pinch has proven himself to be a reliable player. Someone that you can put in there on third down, can catch the ball, knows the assignments. So I think you're going five, six deep there if you include Aker and all players that you like in some capacity. They all bring something different. You have a bona fide star, right? Not a lot of teams. Listen. There's, what, 15, 20 teams out there that say, not even that many, there's 10 to 15 teams out there that can say, we have what we think is a bona fide star running back. And of that group, Braylon Allen is in the top the top two or three, in my opinion. So you have a bona fide star. You have Ches Malusi, who, quite frankly, would start at a majority of, of D1 programs. Like, he would be getting a lot of burn at a lot of schools, more burn than he's getting. And I just love Garendo's school skill set. So I say an A. Uh, it would be A plus if I just had a little more faith in the injury thing. Uh, let's go present grade. Now, there's there's going to be a drop here, right? Or that's present grade. Let's go future grade. B minus. I, I'm, yeah, I think you have Braylon Allen this year and next year. You know, Chez could stay an extra year, but Chez could be gone next year. Isaac Garendo could be gone next year. Uh, Julius Davis, I think he's a good depth piece. You know, he's he's not actually that has that much time left either. And behind him, I don't know. Like, that's the problem, right? That's why I think you should have grabbed the body next last year in last year's class. I think you need a running back in every class, right? Because you're recruiting running backs for two or three years down the road. So not taking a running back in last year's class to me is a mistake. It's a big mistake. 
And originally we thought KD Akimeli may be the running back of that class, but turns out he's a safety, which I, I, I love, by the way, for, for Akimeli. I think KD Akimeli is a better safety project than at running back, but it does mean you didn't bring in a body last year to develop. So now, you know, you, you do have two more years of Braylon Allen this year and next year. And, um, which is great. But after that, there's, there's not much that you can really count on or point to. So I do want to mention the 2023 cycle, right? They're bringing in Jacquez keys, Nate white. Let's talk a little bit about both of those players. So they're bringing in two running backs. Keep in mind, Jacquez keys has been Ohio state's been digging around there. So there's no sure thing here um, with him, but he's a big, powerful bruising running back out of Ohio. Um, Big time program. He was on the show. Love his work ethic. I think both of these are really good gets. Okay, really good running backs. I don't know if either of them is a super high ceiling guy, like the total package, but combined, they really complement each other really well. You know, like I said, um, Keys is is a big physical downhill runner. You know, Michigan looked at offered him as a linebacker. That tells you about his physicality. You know, very productive on a good program. And then Nate White is electric. Like he's electric in the open field. Not a lot of Wisconsin running backs coming out of the high school ranks. So that's that's very cool as well. Uh, but he's electric. He leaves people in the in the dust. Um, he's a player that you're going to get in space, get the ball to, uh, you know, give him give him some pass receptions. And I think that combination works really well. So I like that 2023 combination. But I do feel like the depth here is a little light. And I don't know if there's a surefire answer, um, especially if Ches leaves next year for that even that number two spot. Right? Who's the number two running back if Ches Malusi isn't here? I don't know, right? I don't know if we have that. So maybe next year is a transfer portal thing. They'll have to address it. But I think the depth looking forward past this year is a little light. Uh, I don't love the fact, like I said, that they skipped on adding a running back in a recruiting cycle. I think there's a couple spots every year you add a spot, add a guy, quarterback, running back. You have to add bodies to those and keep the pipeline filled, right? Because when you get that player in, you start developing him. And to miss out on that year of development at that position, I think is a mistake. So yeah, I would say B minus. Let me know if what what everybody thinks. If you think I'm too high, too low on either of those grades, I have A for present day going into this year, and I have B minus looking over the next two or three years. But I will say, uh, and I've talked about both these recruits individually. I really do like that combination of Jacquez Keys and Nate White in the 2023 class. This cycle right now, as long as they can can land both of them, I think Nate White is almost almost surely. Being, becoming a Badger, but Jacquez Keys, we're not 100% sure there. I think he is. I think he'll be in this class when it's all said and done, having talked to him. Uh, he definitely respects the Badger running back tradition. You know, he likes the coaching staff. He likes Al Johnson a lot. So I think he will be, but if Ohio State, you know, puts the full court press on, all bets are off, and then you may have to go back to the drawing board as well. Anyway, guys, that's it. Um, thank you so much for listening to the running back preview just to kind of rehash the big takes, Braylon Allen is not getting the respect he deserves nationally. He's going to be incredible this year. Isaac Grendo's the X factor. And at the end of the day, I think that this could be one of the best backfields in the country, especially if Jackson Aker um, takes to, to fullback really quickly. I want to thank everyone for listening to the show. If you like it, please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment. It really is a great way to support the show. We also have a Discord where we're doing Badger Talks. Um, building a community there. We're going to be doing some free giveaways with some Badger swag on the Discord, you know, as a way to say thank you to everyone that supports the show. So you're going to want to check that out. Go join the Discord. I'll link that in the show notes. Uh, when you're done here, go check out Locked On Big Ten. Nate Dickinson takes you around the Big Ten in 30 minutes or less. Get caught up on all the conference rivals. And with that, everybody, football's coming. We're going to keep pumping out the content. Really appreciate the listens, and we'll talk later on Wisconsin.